Hello everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever a new video that is helpful for you comes up. You can also join our Telegram group if you want the free PDFs of these sessions, they will be available on that very group only. So the link is in the description below. Moving on to the first question then, which says, according to the scale-based regulation, revised regulatory framework for the NBFCs, the regulatory structure of NBFCs shall comprise of how many layers based on their size, activity and perceived riskiness. So recently, RBI has released this uh, revised regulatory framework in order to regulate the NBFCs and it categorizes the NBFCs into certain layers. Okay, so how many layers have the NBFCs been classified into based on their size, activity, risk level? So if you remember in the month of January, RBI came up with a discussion paper, you can say, or it came up with a proposal for the revised for the framework for the NBFCs, okay, where it talked about that we need to classify the NBFCs into different levels. So scale-based framework was proposed uh, in that very draft proposal that came up where public comments were invited. So based on whatever responses were received, now RBI has finally given the framework for the NBFCs based on the that very proposal. So according to that, now the NBFCs as that very set of proposals suggested will be classified into different layers. So the number of layers which NBFCs will be classified into is four. Okay, there is a base layer, then there are top layers as well. So we'll be discussing all that. The answer to this question is option B, four. So may Scale-based regulatory framework ke according to NBFCs ke liye aaya hai. NBFCs ko char categories mein baata jayega, char layers mein baata jayega. So let's see what is this framework all about and why it has recently been released. See, NBFCs are the non-bank finance companies. They perform various functions like that of a bank, but they are not that regulated that way like the banks in India are. Okay, but over time, if you see the role of NBFCs has increased, they are contributing a lot toward rendering the financial services. They are also having a lot of linkages with the overall financial system, with your banks and all. So the role of NBFCs have increased. So if these NBFCs will not be regulated, then there will be more amount of risks involved, more problems will be created. So RBI also comes up with some framework to regulate these NBFCs to a certain extent, especially those NBFCs which are under a higher risk level. Jitni zada risky hoti jayegi NBFC, utna zada zaruri hota jayega usko regulate karna. Otherwise, overall financial system mein uh, stability nahi rahegi, problems create hogi. Okay, so is cheez ko dhyan mein rakhte huye, risk level ke basis pe NBFCs ko alag alag categories mein baata gaya hai, taki accordingly un pe waise hi rules, regulations ragaaya jaye, un unka basically regulation war achcha ho sake. So based on the risk levels, the NBFCs have been classified into different layers in order to enhance their regulation, their overall governance and their working. So... The NBFC sector has increased a lot in size, it has become much more complex, there is a lot of interconnectedness. Okay, so we need to align the regulatory framework for NBFCs, keeping in mind their changed risk profile. That's why this framework has been released. According to this very framework, now let's discuss the framework. First, we'll be discussing what has been the regulatory structure suggested for NBFCs. Is pure framework ke under hum teen cheese discuss karenge. Pehli ki NBFCs ka kya regulatory structure hai. Dusri un pe overall kya rules regulations lagaye gaye hai. Aur tisri har layer ke liye kya specific rules and regulations hai. Although uh, we'll be discussing uh, what regulatory measures have been suggested for the NBFCs and specifically for each layer of NBFC, the detailed guidelines will be released by RBI later on. All right. So firstly, talking about the regulatory structure. So NBFCs will be classified under four layers. So this is the base layer. 
then we'll have a middle layer for NBFC, NBFC of upper layer and the top layer. So this is the topmost layer where the most risky NBFCs will be placed, okay, which will be under a really very highest supervision. And then we have the base layer where comparatively less level of supervision regulation will be there, okay. So alag alag layers banai gai hai, jis mein sabse upar wale jo NBFCs hai, un mein hume zyada rules regulations lane hai, which will be the lower levels. So talking about what uh, all these layers will comprise of, which type of NBFCs will be classified under each level. So if we talk about the base layer, which is the base layer, then who will come from NBFCs? Aayenge? The non-deposit taking NBFCs, that is the NBFCs who are, who are not accepting the deposits from the public, but they are providing other financial services. Those NBFCs having an asset size of less than 1000 crore will be under the base layer. So, 1000 crore se kam ke asset size wali non-deposit taking NBFCs base layer mein aayengi. So, comparatively, less regulation will be there on these NBFCs which will be top layers. Okay. Then there are more other types of NBFCs which are involved in different activities. We have the peer-to-peer -peer lending platform NBFCs, account aggregator NBFCs, finance holding company NBFCs. Then there are certain NBFCs that are uh, providing various financial services but are not availing public funds and are not into any customer interface. So all these types of NBFCs will also be part of the base layer. Okay, so ye uh, ek, uh, kuch categories hai un NBFCs ki jo base layer they cover only. Then coming to the middle layer, uh, uh, NBFCs which are a bit larger in size will be covered over here. Like previously we covered NBFCs with less than 1000 crore size. Okay, here we'll cover NBFCs, non-deposit taking NBFCs with an asset size of 1000 crore or more. Okay, so come wali base layer mein aagai, higher wali middle layer mein aagai. Jo NBFCs deposits accept karti hai, wo bhi middle layer mein aayengi. Okay, all deposit taking NBFCs will be under the middle layer. Then there are other NBFCs based on the activities they are undertaking. Like we have the standalone primary dealers, we have infrastructure debt fund NBFCs, core investment companies, housing finance companies, infrastructure finance companies. So all these types of NBFCs will be a part of the middle layer. Now coming to the upper and the topmost layer. So talking about the upper layer first. It will include the NBFCs which have been identified by RBI as warranting enhanced regulatory requirements. Top 10 eligible NBFCs in terms of their asset size will be covered here. So those NBFCs which require a lot of regulatory, requir regulatory supervision as per RBI regulatory requirements are there for such NBFCs. We need to come up with risk uh, with lot of rules and regulations because they are the Top 10 eligible NBFCs. As asset size ke basis pe jo top 10 NBFCs hai, wo upper layer mein aaj rengi. Okay. So, um, talking about top layer, which uh, type of NBFCs will be covered over here? As of now, there this layer has been kept empty. Abhi ke liye, is layer mein koi NBFC nahi hai. But, if these NBFCs, these top 10 NBFCs which are there in the upper level, if they pose really very high level of systemic risk, overall system ko agar ye wali NBFCs bohat zyada risk dengi aur inko bohat zyada regulation ki zarurat padegi to upper layer se hata ke un NBFCs ko top layer mein dal diya jayega aur unhe zyada rules regulations ko follow karna padega. Okay, so as of now top layer is empty but if these NBFCs which are there in upper level they pose a lot of systemic risk then they will be moved from the upper layer to the top most layer. I hope this classification is clear that what NBFCs will be there in the topmost layer, in the upper layer, in the middle layer and in the base layer. Moving ahead to the next thing. So this is the categorization of NBFCs out of specific activity. So just like we discussed that NBFC peer-to-peer -peer lending, account aggregator and uh, NBFC without public fund, NOFXC, all these NBFCs will be always there under the base layer. NBFC deposit taking, core investment companies, housing finance company and all. These will be either in the middle layer or in the upper layer based on their asset size and the activities they are involved in. Then the um, other category like we had this um, standalone primary dealers and the infrastructure debt fund NBFCs. They will always remain under the middle layer. Okay. And then there are some other NDFCs which remain 
जैसे कि आपकी इन्वेस्टमेंट इन क्रेडिट कंपनी है माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन एन बी एफ सीज है एन बी एफ सी फैक्टर्स हैं मॉडगेट टेलिजी कंपनीज हैं दे कैन लाइ अंडर एनी ऑफ दीज लेयर्स ओके बेस्ड ऑन वट एवर पैरामीटर्स दे आर टू अधियर टू गवर्नमेंट ओन एन बी एफ सीज विल ऑलवेज बी प्लेस्ड इन द बेस लेयर और द मिडिल लेयर दे विल नेवर बी प्लेस दे विल नॉट बी प्लेस इन द अपर लेयर टिल फर्दर एनी फर्दर नोटिस रिगार्डिंग दिस कैम्स सो ये स्पेसिफिक एक्टिविटीज़ के बेसिस पे क्लासिफिकेशन बता दी गई है कि ये टाइप की एन बी एफ सीज इसी लेयर में हो सकती है दूसरी में नहीं मूविंग अ हेज टू द नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ थिंग्स अंडर दिस वेरी नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ आर बी आई सो इट टॉक्स अबाउट द रेगुलेटरी चेंजेस अंडर दी स्केल बेस्ड रेगुलेशन सो हेयर दे हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट फोर मेजर रेगुलेटरी चेंजेस विच आर एप्लीकेबल टू एन बी एफ सीज लेट्स डिस्कस दम वन बाय वन यहाँ सिर्फ चार रेगुलेटरी मेजर्स की बात की गई है फिलहाल के लिए सो द फर्स्ट इज द नेट ओन फंड सो दे सर्टन वे टू कैलकुलेट द नेट ओन फंड वट एवर एन बी एफ सीज दे आर ओके हाउ मच पेड अप इक्विटी कैपिटल दे आर हैविंग हाउ मच फ्री रिजर्व दे आर हैविंग हाउ मच इज दे शेयर प्रीमियम सो यू एड ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड फ्रॉम दैट वेन यू डिडक्ट द एक्यूमुलेटेड लॉसेज एंड द बुक वैल्यू ऑफ योर इन टेंजिबल एसेट्स यू गेट द ओन फंड सो ये बताया गया है कि कैसे आप ओन्ड फंड्स कैलकुलेट कर सकते हो दिस इज द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ ओन्ड फंड्स ओके सो इंक्लूडिंग ऑल योर शेयर इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल प्री रिजर्व शेयर प्रीमियम डिडक्टिंग द इंटेंजिबल एसेट वैल्यू एक्यूमलेटेड लॉसेस एंड वेन यू हैव टू गेट द नेट अमाउंट देन फ्रॉम दिस ओन्ड फंड यू हैव टू डिडक्ट ऑल ऑफ योर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स विच यू आर मेकिंग इन दी एन बी एफ सी इन अदर एन बी एफ सीज और इन दी शेयर वेंचर्स ऑफ योर सब्सिडरीज और अदर ग्रुप कंपनीज If that investment is in excess of 10% of this owned fund, then you have to deduct it, and you'll get the net owned fund. So this is basically the formula of how we can calculate the net owned funds. This is not important. What is important for you all is that what has been the regulatory change. So earlier, the three types of NBFCs: the NBFCs, ICC, MFI, and factors. Investment and credit companies, your uh, microfinance institutions. Investment and credit companies, your micro finance institutions, and the NBFC factors. These three types of NBFCs currently had to have this much of net owned funds: two crore, five crore, five crore. But now they have to gradually increase it to ten crore. Okay, over time, in co, ye net owned fund apna bada ke ten crore karna hai. March 2025 तक इन्हें इसको थोड़ा बढ़ाना है बाई मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इंक्रीज इट टू फाइव करोड़ एंड एम एफ आई एन फैक्टर्स टू सेवन करोड़ एंड बाय मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सेवन ऑल ऑफ दीज एनबीएफ इट टू टेन करोड़ ओके हाउ एवर दी पियर टू पियर एन बी एफ सीज अकाउंट एग्रीगेटर एन बी एफ सीज एंड दोज एन बी एफ सीज विच आर नॉट हैविंग द पब्लिक फंड नो इन कस्टमर इंटरफेस दे कैन कंटिन्यू विद टू करोड़ ऑफ नेट ओन फंड ओके एंड देर विल बी नो चेंज इन द मिनिमम नेट ओन फंड फॉर एन बी एफ सीज आई एफ सी आई डी सी एम जी सीज एच एफ सी एंड एस पी डी जो अभी हमने पीछे डिस्कस किए इन एन बी एफ सीज के लिए कोई चेंज नहीं है ओनली इन तीन एन बी एफ सीज के लिए ये चेंज है Second regulation is with respect to the classification of NPAs. Now you might think that whenever a loan is given and the amount in default is beyond ninety days, okay, beyond ninety days, the amount had no has not yet been recovered, then we classify it as an NPA. But this was not applicable to many of the NBFCs. Many of the NBFCs were there who beyond one twenty days, beyond one fifty days, or even beyond. a uh, larger period of time classified a loan into npa kai npfcs ke case mein ye nahi hota tha ki 90 days tak loan nahi recover hua to wo usko npa declare kar dete hain no unke case mein kafi dinon tak in fact 150 days se bhi zyada tak agar paisa recover nahi hota tha loan ka tab bhi wo usko as a npa declare nahi karte the so now what rbi has said as per the new set of regulations that all the nbfcs okay the npa uh, the npa classification norm changed to overdue period of more than 90 days for all categories of nbfcs so a glide path is provided to nbfcs in base layer to adhere to 90 day npa norm so jo nbfcs ye norm nahi follow karti thi ki 90 day ke beyond unhe npa declare karna padega ab over time unko ye norm follow karna padega now over time they have to adhere to this norm that beyond 90 days alone will be an npa 
so they are given a certain time frame a transition time is being given like uh, by 2024 they have to adhere to this norm that beyond 150 days a loan not recovered will be an npa by next year that is 2025 this time line needs to be reduced that if there is a loan in default beyond 120 days that will be an npa but by 2026 they have to adhere to this norm that agar aapka 90 days tak डिफॉल्ट में है लोन तो आपको उसको एन पी ए क्लासीफाई करना होगा ओके दिस ग्लाइड पाथ इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल टू एन पी एफ सी आर ऑलरेडी फॉलोइंग द नाइन्टी डे नॉर्म सो जो ऑलरेडी नाइन्टी डे नॉर्म फॉलो कर रहे हैं कि नाइन्टी डेज तक डिफॉल्ट रहा तो उसको एन पी ए बना दो उनके लिए नहीं है बाकी एन बी एफ सी इसके लिए है ये मूविंग अड टू द नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ रेगुलेशन सो इट रिलेट्स टू द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द बोर्ड in order to bring in more professional experience in the board of nbfcs uh, they have a requirement now that at least one of their directors should have a prior experience of working in a bank or an nbfc so professional uh, uh, experience enhance karne ke liye nbfcs ke jo matters hai wo better manage ho sake isliye at least directors mein se ek director ko uh, kisi aur bank ya nbfc mein kaam karne ka experience hona chahiye okay then is a very important point that's related to ceiling on ipo funding this is a lot in news these days that a restriction has been imposed on the lending per borrower for you uh, for basically subscribing to ipo so there shall be a ceiling of 1 crore per borrower for financial subscription to ipo what the uh, investors used to do especially the high net worth individuals the high net worth investors they used to borrow a lot of amount from these nbfcs and whenever a company came up with their ipo they used to utilize this borrowed money to subscribe to their shares so they used to raise a lot of amount and use it for buying the shares in an ipo because of which the ipos got over subscribed so now a restriction has been imposed that per borrower an nbfc cannot lend more than 1 crore for subscribing to ipo so high net worth individuals kya karte the ye bahut zyada paisa loan mein leke nbfc se आई पी ओज के शेयर्स जब आते थे तो आई पी ओ होता था किसी कंपनी का तो उनके शेयर्स खरीद लेते थे इनफैक्ट ओवर सब्सक्राइब हो जाते थे वो शेयर्स एंड फिर उसी दिन उसको सेल करके गेन करके ये पैसा वापस कर देते थे सो बिकॉज ऑफ विच एफिशेंटली द प्राइजेस वर ऑफ दैट वेरी शेयर्स वर नॉट डिटरमाइंड सेम डे यू आर बाइंग एंड डम्पिंग ऑन दैट दो वेरी शेयर्स many other investors were not getting getting the opportunity to invest in those shares because these high net worth individuals took a major chunk of that very ipo so this ceiling has been imposed moving ahead now to the next set of uh, rules so now we will talk about the rules specific to each layer ab har ek layer ke liye alag se thode bahut rules regulations bataye gaye hain detailed guidelines abhi aur baad mein aayengi okay so अगर हम अपर लेयर एन की बात करें वॉट आर द रेगुलेटरी चेंजेस फॉर अपर लेयर अ लॉट ऑफ रेगुलेशन दे हैव टू फॉलो लाइक इंटरनल कैपेसिटी एडिक्वेसी कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी असेसमेंट प्रोसेस सो दीज एन बी एफ सीज नीड टू असेस देयर कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट्स ओके दे नीड टू डू देयर सुपरवाइजरी रिव्यू इवेल्युएशन प्रोसेस लाइक द बेजिल थ्री रिकमेंड्स secondly they need to uh, adhere to the common equity tier 1 ratio okay 9% of their risk weighted asset needs to be a common equity capital to be maintained so basel requirements basically inko follow karni hai then is in addition to the uh, this very crar they need to be subjected to leverage requirement leverage ke liye ceilings impose hongi different they need to adhere to uh, maintaining different amount of provisions for different assets then related to the sensitive sector exposure so if they are being exposed to the capital markets or to the real estate markets then there is a need to fix certain limits as to how much can be their exposure so alag alag regulations hai ki aapko capital adequacy issues maintain karne hain leverage uh, pe aapko ceiling lagani hai provisions maintain karne hain sensitive sectors ko agar aap lend kar rahe ho ya unke sath aap deal kar rahe ho to usme limits honi chahiye then is the concentration of credit so if these nbfcs used to lend or used to invest there were separate limits on them okay 15% for lending 15% for investment now they have revised it into a single exposure limit of 25% for a single borrower and for a group of borrower 40% so the credit concentration limits which were prescribed separately shall be merged into single exposure kitna aapka overall exposure ho sakta hai 
ये लिमिट्स चेंज कर दी गई हैं ठीक है कितना आप इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हो या कितना आप एक सिंगल बोरोवर आप कितना बेसिकली लैंड कर सकते हो ओके सो दिस कंसंट्रेशन लिमिट्स विल बी फॉर लैंडिंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स दैट हैव बीन मर्ज टुगेदर सिंगल पार्टी में कितना इन्वेस्ट हो सकता है या कितना सिंगल पार्टी से बोरो कर सकते हो सिंगल पार्टी बोरो कर सकती है देन Uh, we have the sensitives and this we have already discussed next is the regulatory restrictions on the loans so agar aap uh, directors ko relatives ko senior officers ko nbfcs ke loans doge to us pe restrictions hai there are restrictions on granting loans to those people related to the firm then uh, the limit on large exposures key managerial person pe limits lagai gayi hai that the key managerial person cannot hold an office in other nbfc which is in the middle layer or an upper layer if you are a key managerial person of the nbfc upper layer then independent directors shall not be on the board of more than 3 nbfcs then there are certain disclosure requirements you need to employ you need to have a chief compliance officer you have certain other governance matters as well सो so, ये कुछ रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं अपर लेयर की अब अगर हम बात करें मिडिल लेयर की सो सम ऑफ दीज विच वर एप्लीकेबल टू अपर लेयर दीज सेट ऑफ गाइडलाइंस आर आल्सो देयर फॉर द मिडिल लेयर लाइक इंटरनल कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी असेसमेंट दे आल्सो रिक्वायर टू डू सो कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ क्रेडिट सेंसिटिव सेक्टर एक्सपोजर रेगुलेटरी रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन द लोन्स के चीफ कंप्लाइंस ऑफिसर होना चाहिए अदर गवर्नेंस मैटर्स सो अपर लेयर की तरह ये मिडिल लेयर में भी ये कुछ रेगुलेटरी चेंजेस एप्लीकेबल होंगे ना लास्टली टॉकिंग अबाउट द बेस लेयर सो बेस लेयर एंड बी एफ सीज नीड टू मेक अ रिस्क मैनेजमेंट कमिटी दे नीड टू मेक सर्टन एक्स डिस्कलोजर्स अबाउट द टाइप्स ऑफ एक्सपोजर्स और द रिलेटेड पार्टी ट्रांजेक्शन और द लोन्स गिवन टू द डायरेक्टर्स सीनियर ऑफिसर्स योर कस्टमर कंप्लेन्स ऑल दीज थिंग्स नीड्स टू बी डिस्कलोज then they need a board approved policy if they have to give loans to the directors to the senior officers or to the relatives so these are some regulatory changes which have been mentioned in this very set notification released by rbi for the nbfcs so this was all about this very new framework discussing the questions related to this so the second question says which of the following will be part of the base layer of nbfc as per the scale based regulatory framework so base layer mein kya kya aa jayega we discussed all that so nbfcs with asset size of less than 1000 crore will be covered here here they are saying more than 1000 crore no peer to peer nbfcs will be there account aggregated nbfcs will be there so the answer is that second and third will be covered option d moving to third question which of the following nbfcs is or are not a part this is important not a part of top layer so we have discussed kiya top layer ke abhi tak vacant hai upper layer ki kuch companies jo bahut zyada uh, systemic risk karein uh, basically pose karengi wo bhi top layer mein jayengi abhi ke liye top layer empty hai so none of these are part of the top layer so answer is option e that all the three are not a part of top layer coming to last question what is the latest ceiling on the ipo funding set by rbi as per which not more than certain amount per borrower can be used to finance subscribing an ipo so we just discuss it's 1 crore discussing very briefly about this 1 crore not more than 1 crore can be lent by an nbfc to investors who want to buy stocks in an ipo initial share sales to hote company jab for first time public jati hai and uh, they uh, invite people to subscribe to their shares so uh, the investors used to borrow money from nbfcs and use it for buying these ipo shares so mo not more than 1 crore per borrower can be lent by these nbfcs this is done to basically deal with the risks in the overall financial system this will have a major impact now those high net in high net worth investors who used to borrow they won't be able to borrow this very large amount and subscribe for ipos if they are not uh, subscribing that much for the ipos over subscription chances will be less less over subscriptions are there then it will ensure better price discovery because what these investors used to do they used to borrow the money buy these ipos same way they used to dump these stocks okay so now those who actually want to invest who were otherwise not given a chance or allocated the shares will be allocated those shares 
New rules will reduce the quantum of funds available with the net worth individuals who are bidding in IPOs. Okay. So this will have major impacts. This might uh, create opportunities might, maybe for small NBFCs to lend, but this might pose a problem for the high net worth individuals who usually subscribe a lot to the IPOs. But if the oversubscriptions will be less, the overall price discovery will improve. So these are few impacts of this very new regulation that uh, RBI has come up with for the NBFCs. So this was all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.